What's up guys, Bloodshed here. Today we're gonna to talk about a tier list for Diablo 3 patch 265 in season 17. I did not wanna do this video, but the community strong-armed me, so here you go, I'm a man of the people. I normally don't like doing tier lists because it's like me telling you where the build is gonna go, and there's always somebody that's gonna push it higher, farther, but if you ever wanted to know what goes on in my brain where I think the builds land, this is what I believe the builds are. If you see an asterisk by them, that means that they have higher potential, like I think Carnival has higher potential, and multi-shot demon hunter has higher potential if you see the hc that means it's super hardcore friendly everything you can turn into a hardcore build there's really no difference between softcore and hardcore but if they have a little hc symbol by it it means that they're super duper tanky let's start off by looking at the s tier that's the 135 ish all these are ish tiers around 135 ish is lorn lahan thorns necromancer it's really tanky obviously and it can push extremely high it's probably my pick for the best build in the game then you have lawn star pack wizard um, bazooka wizard all these kind of lawn wizards are extremely powerful you will use it in the group meta as well Hardcore Chantoto is the Veer set with the new Chantoto set. It newly got buffed to 4,000% damage. It's also my pick for probably the fastest speed build in the entire game as well for hundreds, like low level speeds, like hundreds. I guess hundreds are low level now, but that's what I think. Then you have Lawn Corpse Lance, an oldie but a goodie, right? It's kind of plays just like Trigal and Pestilence Corpse Lance. Now that you get to wear the Lawn Rings, it can push even higher than ever before. So if you were pulling my arm, I would say all these are around 135, but Lawn Thorns Necro might be like a 138 to 140 territory. In the A tier, around 130 or so, I would say Lawn Wave of Light is really, really good for that level. Also, um, Hardcore Lawn Meteor Shower. So it's an extremely tanky build. You can stack all the goodies, lots of health, and you can survive just about anything with Lawn Meteor. And then you have Lawn Bless Shield, AKA Captain America, AKA Kiwi Sater, right? Um, this is one of the new stars of the patch. It's kind of really tanky. If you put life on hit on your weapon and maybe on your bracers, you can kind of tank it up a lot. Or if you use the Holy Rune, but the classic build should be around 130 solo GRs. And then you have Lawn Singularity. So in the past, Rat Runs were the best farming meta because they use Singularity spell. Now, instead of Rothma, you use Legacy of Nightmares because it's the lawn season and you still use Singularity spell, but it should be even better than ever. It should just be a beast at farming Paragon. In the B tier, 125, we have Jade. Jade was probably the strongest build last season, but since it's competing in a lawn season, you lose the Ring of Royal Grandeur buff. That's a lot of things that you see here. Like if you're seeing the list and you're like, whoa, whoa, didn't like Gen Monk do like a 130 or whatever, 135 or something like that? Without the, the Ring of Royal Grandeur, a lot of builds get absolutely destroyed. You, some builds aren't even that much usable anymore. Like Charge Barb is down in the, like the low 120s, for instance, just because losing that ring hurt really bad. And the same thing with um, the, the Lawn Season. Like let's say you have Lawn Carnival. Let's say it does a 130 this season. There's no way it's going to do 130 next season once they lose the Lawn Ring buff, right? So that's why maybe some things look a little crazy to... The eye, the untrained eye, I don't know. Jade 125, Lawn Carnival, this has an asterisk. I think you can probably get to like 130, I guess. But my opinion is it's gonna be mostly around 125 to 127. Then you have Hardcore, Lawn, Rapid Fire. We covered all these builds on the channel. Uh, Carnival might be my Hardcore main also. And then Lawn, Rapid Fire, I might play on Softcore. This is like the new turret rapid fire build pretty badass then you have um impale impale is obviously hardcore friendly mobile tanky have a lot of life leech and um i think it was like around 130 last season and season 16 but without the ring of royal grandeur buff it kind of just knocked it down a tier but you know b doesn't mean bad and um, 125 is badass in itself right Ray Korhoda was around 130-ish as well this season. I think without the buff, it'll drop it down to 125 area, like 128, something like that. Pretty cool build. Charge into the wall five times and then DPS. Who doesn't like that? Spirit Barrage, Witch Doctor. This probably should have an asterisk by it as well. There's a lot of potential with Spirit Barrage. I just think not a lot of people are going to be pushing with it because you have like Carnival hype and people really like Jade still. Hardcore, Holy Shotgun, Holy Shotgun, Seder. We did a video on the channel as well really tanky and i think there'll be like one savage that gets it to, to 25 if i had to slot it in i'd say it'd be around like 123 to 125 territory in that solid b tier and then we have the invoker set invoker was really powerful the best 
build for Crusaders in season 16, but losing that extra buff, it'll probably drop it down to B tier. Still really amazing. And these build hits, this is like one of the best starters. Invoker and Impale are the starters for Hadrig, and they're actually amazing. And then you have Firebird and Talrasha Meteor. They're noticeably weaker than Lawn Meteor Shower and Lawn Star Pact. Hardcore friendly, Natalia 6, Marauder 4. This is particularly the cold version. The cold version is hella tanky. If you play the fire one, it's not so much but it definitely receives a mention for being tanky and still really powerful. And then you have Pestilence and Bloodlance in the same tier. They're both great. This is like the you pop Land of the Dead, you pop Simulacrum and you target two elites per cycle. So these are pretty cool, but they're noticeably weaker than Lawn Corpse Lance in my opinion. I mean, the sets are higher in itself, right? Lawn and Akan Condemn Crusaders it should be around 125. A lot of people really believe in this build and it has the potential, I suppose. Maybe there should be an asterisk by it, but um, I really hate the lawn version because you're starved on resource. It's really fine for like, say, T16, but when you're pushing with it, it's so obnoxious. Even with like a cinder coat, if you use the fire rune, I really don't like it. And the Akan Condemn has been thoroughly tested many times. I think it'll be around 125 next season. Lawn or DMO Frozen Orb should also be around 125. They're really underestimated builds, these like Frozen Orb, Lawn, Frozen Orb, DMO. A lot of these builds are super underestimated. It wouldn't shock me if someone got to like 128 with Lawn, Frozen Orb. In his Wave of Light, super tanky. It was really the star of the current season. It was around, you know, like 130-ish. And then without the Ring of World Grandeur buff, I feel like maybe it got knocked down to like 127, 128. Uh, I just don't feel like it should be in the A tier because Lawn Wave of Light is noticeably stronger than it. So maybe I just put it in B tier because I know it's not up here. The C tier, man. Lawn or Sun Wuko LTK are in the C tier. This might be one of my mains. I love Sun Wuko LTK. So you can tell I'm unbiased because I've been raving about this build nonstop for a while now. It's one of my favorites. I always talk about the propeller when flying dragon procs, you have this like you spin so fast, you have like this propeller effect. It's extremely satisfying. And we also have multi shot in the seats here. Multi shot has a lot of potential. It just really takes someone to push it and uh, capitalize on that potential. So most of us are going to be playing fire multi shot. And we'll probably you know push and push and get to like 122, 123. And there'll be one savage like Wudijo or somebody that plays physical multi-shot or something like that and really just kind of min-maxes the build and gets to the B tier. So a lot of these could jump tiers if you're really, really put time and effort into learning the build and pushing and fishing and all that stuff. But I think typically it'll be around this power level. And then you have Roland. Roland's Super underrated as well. It hits really fast. A lot of life on hit. A lot of uh, wave clear. Yuliana's six. There was somebody in Asia, I think, at a 123, 124 with Yuliana's. Yuliana's is solid in that C tier. Without the Ring of Royal Grandeur buff, I could see it dropping down to closer to 120. And then you have Sun Wuka Wave of Light. I think it's only lower than Inez because it's not as tanky. So you can kind of get away with more with Inez. So it's Wuko and then Inez and then Lawn Wave of Light. That makes sense to me. Arakir and Lawn Firebat are also in the same tier. They have roughly the same set bonus. Um, you get to carry more tankier things with Lawn Firebat. But with Arakir, you can wear the Traveler's Pledge Endless Walk set. So I basically put them in the same category. Um, and then you have Leap Quake with super hardcore friendly. It doesn't look like that on the surface, but um, yeah, it's pretty tanky in itself. Then you have um, IK Hoda. That's a full IK Hoda build, really tanky. This one is tough and you have a lot of, with Barb, you have a lot of Life Per Fury. Life Per Fury is one of the best healing mechanics in the game, but it just really dramatically changes the build. We're like pokey wrapping this stuff. I'm on it, I'm, I'm, I'm ready, all right? Intermission, little, little break in between. Lawn Hoda, which is stronger than IK, but I didn't want to put it up here with Jade. That sounds crazy. So I decided to leave it in the same tier. I think it's like maybe a few levels higher. Like maybe this is like a one, 124, 125, maybe. And then this is like closer to like 125, I guess. I don't know. Lawn Death Nova is the Iron Rose build. That's really powerful. Somebody could optimize it and push it further. Uh, Helltooth Gargantuan, the pet build. Um, somebody did push in the low 120s with this and um, without the Ring of Royal Grandeur season, I think it's maybe closer to like 118 to 120. Hammered in, probably 121 territory around there. C tier, pretty solid overall. Crusader does have a lot of options on this list in general. And then um, Veer's Frozen Orb, there's probably one Savage that can push this to uh, B tier. 
Um, but yeah, it's like reverse Archon. Nobody's going to be playing it. Everyone's going to be playing this other hype stuff up here. But it does have the potential to crack into B tier. There should probably be an asterisk here as well. Um, if you don't know about Veer's Frozen Orb, you build up your stacks in Archon, and then you throw out Frozen Orb when you're outside of Archon. When you're outside of Archon, you retain that Archon power for like 20 seconds. So that's where that comes from. And then Charge Barb, the Fall from Grace, man. Charge Barb, I guess it was around 130, but with without the Ring of Royal Grandeur season, it really just kind of cuts the legs out from under it. Maybe it should be in B tier, but um, with my testing, it just doesn't have that same punch so i dead drop it to c tier closer like a c plus tier i guess would be if i could if i had a c plus tier it would be rake or charge barb and then you have the generator builds the generator builds also got hit really hard without having the ring of royal grandeur buff rainman and in gen i put in c tier so yeah i mean rainman might be in b but it's just like these got hit really extremely hard with uh without the ring of royal grandeur buff we also have marauder sentry in the c tier zuni carnival Inarius Death Nova. Lawn Bomb made a return, like the Thorns, Lawn Bomb Seder. I would say it's in C tier based on what we experienced. And then you have a Khan Blessed Shield also in C tier. We tested this a little bit on the PTR and a little bit on stream today. And it has some potential to crack into the like maybe low 120s, high teens. So I, and then we have the D list, which is Tempest Rush, which is like a fan service kind of thing if you ever wanted to play it. Whirlwind Barb. Whirlwind Barb might be closer to like 118 territory um hardcore okay so this is a build that no one really ever mentions this is mostly only a hardcore build because in softcore you'd play classic leap quake but this is like a seismic slam might of the earth ik build so you use might of the earth six piece it buffs seismic slam to twenty thousand percent damage and then you use the four piece ik so you have like wrath the berserker up the whole time it's a pretty solid build and um i use it on a little bit on hardcore this past season i believe and it was fine i enjoyed it pretty good build overall if you're playing hardcore and you don't want to play leap quake this might be the build for you firebird with a chantoto set i would put around the 115 tier it's really powerful it's basically just like veers except for you know use fire spells lawn fan of knives oldie but a goodie rothma singularity might have higher potential but i think it's in the d tier and then veers mantled heal like a classic archon with mantled and in the F tier, like I didn't want to put every build on the list. Like we can only do so much in a limited amount of time. Um, around 110, Lawn Thorns Barb. If you really put a lot of potential, a lot of work into it, you can probably hit around 110, maybe. And then Natalia's Strafe, and I don't know. That's all. That's all we got, man. If you think the list should be different, it's totally fine, man. Just let me know what you think in a nice, constructive way. Be gentle, chat. I didn't want to do this, but the community, I did it for the community. I'll have a, a link in the description for like the, um, the screenshot of this if you don't want to have to use the video reference every single time. Make sure to follow me at twitch.tv slash blush. I'll be streaming there all the time, all season long, 24 hour stream, the works. We got just an incredible amount of patrons lately and I really thank you guys so much for the support. It helps so much. Shout out to Liam, freaking Cobra XP, man. Thank you for that. We got a Blood God patron tier from Kadath. Thank you, bro. That's so generous. You guys are out of control. On, on Twitch, we got so many subs lately. Power Sheller dropping a pledge. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Supporting Diablo content creators in 2019. Oh my God, they said it couldn't be done, chat. And here we are. I hope you're excited for the season. I know I'm extremely excited. I can't wait to just play the game. All this research is like just the ultimate buildup for me. I'm freaking out, man. I need to get in. I need to kill some demons and make things right in the world of Sanctuary. This is the bobo 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 bloodshed. And I'm uh, out of, out of, out of, out of here. Pa -pa 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 -pa. This is probably obnoxious at this point. Peace.